Hello and welcome to this video on generalization of types in Hindley-Milner. In previous videos we've looked at Hindley-Milner types and contexts. We've also looked at free variables in types and contexts and the rules we can apply on these kind of different productions to find out the free variables. So we're going to use that knowledge and apply it to understanding generalization. So this is an example of generalization. In the first line we've got for all beta, alpha to beta, and what we're doing is we're generalizing that. By that we mean take the free variables in that line. So in this case, the free variables are just alpha. Uh, and we're going to slap a for all quantifier in front of it with those free variables. So basically look at all the free variables and make them not free by binding them with for all quantifiers. That's generalization in a nutshell. Again, adding for all quantification to a free type variable in a type. We are often working within a context, a typing context. Uh, so in Hindley Milner, we can only generalize a type when the type variable is not free in the context. So with that knowledge, we can basically define uh, the kind of type signature for our function. So generalize takes a context and a type and returns the most generalized version of the type. And that's basically going to add all our for all quantified type variables that are free in the type sigma, but not free in the context gamma. So let's look at an example of that. Here we have a context gamma where we've got a few different uh, assignments. We've got x as type beta, y has type list of gamma to int, we've got z has type for all delta delta, and then we've got this type uh, sigma, which is going to be for all epsilon alpha to beta to gamma to delta to epsilon. And we want to know if we generalize that type with this context, what is the result? So you can pause now if you want to try this yourself, uh, otherwise I will go through it. So remember, the generalized function takes our type and adds additional for all quantified variables to it. So in this case, we're going to have that type and we're going to add new things. And so the real question is, what are these additional for all quantifiers that we're going to add? And those are going to be the free variables in the type that aren't free in the context. Uh, and so let's figure out what are the free variables in the type and the free variables in the context. Um, that's our next question. Well, uh, in the context, uh, x is a beta, so beta is free y has lists of gamma to int, so gamma is free, um, z is for all delta delta, so delta isn't free because it's bound by that for all quantifier, so it's just beta and gamma. In our type sigma, um, well we've got for all epsilon alpha to beta to gamma to delta to epsilon, and here the first four are free, but the epsilon is bound by that for all quantifier, so it's alpha beta gamma delta. Okay, now we have these two, uh, our next question is well, what's in our type and not in the context. So we can just do some basic uh, set difference to figure that out. Uh, and that is alpha and delta is free in our type, but not free in our context. And so those are the for all quantifiers we can add to generalize our type. And so we end up with this type. Uh, and so overall, our answer is for all alpha, for all delta, for all epsilon, alpha to beta to gamma to delta to epsilon is a generalized type in that context. So we covered what generalization is. We looked at a generalization function which finds the most generalized type uh, with respect to some context. You can kind of see how this is related to instantiation. Uh, it's almost the opposite approach where rather than removing for all qualifiers and instantiating them, we're adding for all quantifiers and generalizing a type. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.